Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. So continuing our discussion about antibiotics, now we are going to talk about a commonly used drug which is the metronidazole. Metronidazole is classified as an anti-parasite but it also works on anaerobic bacteria and that's why we are going to take it in the antibiotic series. It is also very important to understand the chemical structure of the metronidazole because we are going to use it to understand the mechanism of action. So the metronidazole is, contains the imidazole ring. Imidazole ring look like that. We have double bonds here and double bonds here. And the imidazole ring connected to a nitro group. And from this side, it is connected to a methyl group. And here, uh, OH. And in this video, we are going to talk about the pharmacokinetics, the mechanism of action, the spectrum, the resistance, the therapeutic uses, the dosing, and the adverse effects of the metronidazole. So I created a Patreon page for people interested in supporting this channel uh, and your donations are going to help create better videos uh, and your donations are very much appreciated. So uh, if you want, there's a link in the description below. So let's start by talking about the pharmacokinetics of the uh, metronidazole. And let's start with the absorption. So metronidazole available in oral, IV, cream, uh, gel type of formulas. The oral formula has very good absorption even with food. So good uh, absorption uh, even with food. Regarding distribution, the metronidazole have molecular weight of 137 and this is very very low molecular weight. It lets the metronidazole to cross the blood-brain barrier in high levels or in very good levels and it also penetrates to body fluids it also cross placenta and have good concentrations in breast milk but it is not teratogenic and it has no risk with breast milk with lactation no risk Metabolism uh, is by the liver, uh, by oxidation and glucornidation process. So oxidation, glucornidation processes and excretion is by the kidney. So excretion uh, by the kidney as metabolites and as unchanged drug. And sometimes it gives the urine the brown color. So sometimes gives urine brown color. Now let's talk about the mechanism of action of the metronidazole. So the metronidazole work on anaerobes only, work on uh, anaerobes only. So in the anaerobic bacteria, we have an enzyme uh, that's called the pyruvate, pyruvate ferredoxin oxidoreductase.
uh, it is abbreviated into BFOR, the pyruvate ferredoxine oxidase reductase. This enzyme helps the bacteria generate ATP. Generate ATP and it works the same as the Krebs cycle in the aerobic bacteria. And the pyruvate ferredoxine oxidase reductase would take the metronidazole as a metabolite for this enzyme. So the metronidazole would be taken as a metabolite and it would get reduced by the PFOR enzyme and this would lead to uh, the oxygen in the metronidazole getting reduced and they become uh, toxic free radicals that damage the bacterial DNA. So we have the metronidazole structure here. So imidazole ring connected to nitro group and here we have a methyl group and that's the metronidazole and by the PFOR enzyme the metronidazole is getting reduced here the oxygens here are reduced so again the imidazole ring uh, and the oxygen this time is only connected by one bond so it become activated and become oxygen free radicals and this would damage the bacterial DNA and it will lead to uh, bacterial cell death so bacterial death so basically the metronidazole is a prodrug that is activated inside the anaerobic bacteria so metro uh, is pro drug uh, activated inside the bacteria and the P of OR enzyme is not available in the human so PFOR uh, not available in humans so no effect on the uh, human body now let's talk about the spectrum of the metronidazole so the metronidazole work on 99% of the anaerobic bacteria uh, gram positives including the gram positives and the gram negatives uh, it also works on protozoa uh, like the anti-amoeba histolytica the Giardia and the Trichomonas vaginalis uh, all of those have the PFR, PFOR enzyme so all have PFOR enzyme now let's talk about the resistance against the metronidazole so resistance is rare uh, and if available so it is acquired and that's by the decrease entry of the drug and pumping the drug out of the cell pumping the drug out of the bacterial cell now let's talk about the therapeutic uses of the metronidazole so metronidazole work on uh, all anaerobic infections work on all 
and aerobic uh, infections like peritonitis, gas gangrene, and dental infections. It also uh, work on bacterial vaginosis, which is overgrowth of bacteria in the vagina. It also work on intestinal amoebiasis. So intestinal amoebiasis, this is infection caused by anti-amoeba histolytica. It causes intestinal amoebiasis and the patient present with abdominal pain, bloody diarrhea, uh, and lethargy. And the diagnosis is by stool examination. Uh, and the treatment is with metro metronidazole. It is also used to treat giardiasis, giardiasis. And the patient present with abdominal pain and diarrhea and weight loss. Uh, and the diagnosis is by stool examination. Now let's talk about the dosing of the metronidazole. We have oral dosing and we have uh, intravenous dosing. So the oral dosing is from 30 to 50 milligrams per kilogram per day. The upper limit is 50 and the dose divided into three times per day. The intravenous dosing is from 20 to 40 milligrams per kilogram per day. And it is also uh, divided to three times. Finally, let's talk about the adverse effects of the metronidazole. We have common adverse effects and rare. So they come on include GIT, gastrointestinal tract upset in form of diarrhea uh, and nausea and vomiting. Also, we have oral moniliasis, which is yeast infection of the mouth, and that's because the metronidazole is secreted into the saliva and it would kill the beneficial bacteria in the, uh, in the mouth and it would lead to oral moniliasis or the growth of the uh, yeast inside the mouth. The metronidazole also have disulfiram-like reaction. So disulfiram-like uh, reaction. So the, the disulfiram is used for people who want to quit alcohol drinking. It helps those people uh, to become drunk once they drink a little bit of alcohol. So it gives them the drunk symptoms uh, when drinking a little bit of alcohol. So normally the alcohol is metabolized into acetaldehyde And acetaldehyde is furtherly metabolized into the uh, H2O plus CO2, water and carbon dioxide. Uh, and that's by acetaldehyde dehydrogenase enzyme. Uh, the acetaldehyde, so normally the alcohol would be metabolized into acetaldehyde and acetaldehyde would be metabolized into those. But when the acetaldehyde, when the, patient, when the person drinks a lot of alcohol, we get a lot of acetaldehyde, and the acetaldehyde would, uh, would give the drunk symptoms, which include the nausea, uh, the vomiting, the, ment the mental disturbance, and others. Uh, the disulfiram 
inhibit the acetal acetaldehyde dehydrogenase. It would inhibit the acetaldehyde dehydrogenase, so the person would will have acetaldehyde building up really quickly. So once they drink a little bit of alcohol, they would have the drunk symptoms quickly already. So the metronidazole works the same way as the acetaldehyde as the disulfiram does. It also inhibits the acetaldehyde dehydrogenase and it would give disulfiram like reaction. We also have the rare adverse effects, so rare adverse effects, and those include the neurological toxicity, and that's in form of headache, dizziness, vertigo, uh, and even seizures, and that's because the metronidazole crosses the blood-brain barrier, and it would cause neurological toxicity in rare settings. And it also might cause Steven Johnson syndrome, which is severe skin reaction. And also it might cause bone marrow suppression uh, in form of anemia, thrombocytopenia, and that's uh, rare also. And with that, we reach the end of this video. Thank you guys for watching. Please make sure to like and subscribe and see you in the next video. Peace.